Hello, hello. Um, where's my music? So, hello. Um, yeah, yesterday, unfortunately, I couldn't stream. So, I'm gonna catch up today. <clears throat> so, today I wanted to add few monster skills. And um, yeah, hopefully develop another monster skill system that will allow me to do some interesting stuff. So yeah, let's start. <clears throat> so first of all, let's create a new skill. And call it exhausted. So this one is going to be this one is going to be cast on self. Zero cast time cooldown. Um, let's say sixty seconds. Global cooldown can be, you know, two seconds actually. <clears throat> and animation duration two seconds as well so the monster is gonna stay in place for two seconds zero mana actually can i drain all the mana i'm not sure uh, i think it was minus one or something Yeah, minus one. <clears throat> so let's do that. Also, it's going to consume all rage. Going to be six. Zero enmity. No requirements. For now, it's to no effects. So, <clears throat> we need to decide on the skill levels. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten levels. And we need to decide how it's going to work. Actually, maybe even 20 levels, but we will see. <clears throat> so for this skill, for this skill, where is my small cheat sheet? Uh, I want to um, reduce speed uh, by, I don't know, speed minus 30%. Um, Evasion rate minus 50% at least. Um, attack speed minus 50% as well. <clears throat> Besides that, what can we reduce um, attack power, for example? But no, for, for now, this should be enough. Then levels are going to change the duration. So this is going to be for 30 seconds. 40. 50, 60. So the maximum level is gonna be two minutes, right? Two minutes. Yeah. I think this is what I want. So this is 70 seconds, 80, 90. And so cooldown for this is going to be yeah, 60, 70, 80. No, wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> so if I do it like that, it's going to be like 30 seconds cooldown after the exhaust um, wear off. But I probably want to do like double the amount. So this is going to be 80, 100, 120, 140, 160. 180, 200, 
twenty to thirty. Oh. To forty. Okay, looks good. Now let's create additions for that. So we need speed. Running speed minus twenty three hundred, just minus thirty percent. Then attack no. Evasion rate. So melee evasion rate, ranged evasion rate, magic evasion rate, minus twenty five hundred. And attack speed. And this is going to be identical. So let's double check. We have running speed, melee evasion rate, ranged evasion rate, magic evasion rate. And attack speed. Yeah. And here we have minus 30, minus 50, minus 50, minus 50, minus 50. Okay, looks good. Now we need to add that thing to scale additions. <laughs> right, icon is going to be one because we need to display that. Uh, type, type. Let me see. This position. is a one, it's negative. No intervals, no effects. Yeah, looks good. Now let's add here. Let's just create a new one. So this scale, this scale, it's 
gonna be primary self permanent duration 60 seconds no wait 30 seconds for the first level right yes 30 seconds and the name exhausted let's duplicate two three four five six seven eight nine ten Forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, one hundred, one ten, one twenty. Now let's add the scale. So this one, for example. This scale, monster AT is going to be mm. Here, this one. So probability, probability is gonna be, let's say 5%, in combat, not an idle. And uh, we need to use this one, combat duration. So combat duration seconds, let's do, 35 oh really doesn't have a default really okay let's do the same for this one this one and this one but for the last two it's gonna be till five percent but not 45 seconds but mm, 60 And the skill level, so for, for the small ones, we have the level four. It's for 60 seconds. Let's do for the small ones, 90 seconds. So yeah, let's try that.
So, where are my chat chats? So let's see, 30 seconds, so for the small ones it's gonna be 45 seconds, right? Almost died. 15 more seconds. Okay, I think this looks good. Now let's see with the big ones.
Okay, so this thing is done now. <clears throat> What's next? I wanted to try oxygen drain. Should be pretty easy to do, but I'm not sure. Um, let's try fourteen. Oxygen drain. Actually, no, not this scale. Um, what can we? Guess we can use this one. So fourteen oxygen drain. Range is gonna be lower, like five hundred, I think. And target enemy cast time. Won't have any attack type. No skill handlers. I have some effects, but I don't remember how they look like, so we're gonna just check. How it looks like. So now we need this. No icons, no this stuff. So here, let's set everything to null. Let's set everything here to zero. So here we need oxygen. And 
and we're gonna train everything. Now let's go here. This skill, this addition, primary, target, permanent, zero duration, oxygen drain. <clears throat> and now let's add it to mermaids. Chance for now one hundred percent in combat. I need to somehow fix this thing. Because this is a nine. So why is that a thing? Let me check. Schema. Yeah, this should be okay. Um, mm -hmm. So let me Export first, then import again. So let's see. Okay, perfect. Wait, where did it go? Um, so it should be... Thirteen oh one. 
I messed up the, the ADs, unfortunately. So I need to remove this. And this. Okay, so now we can check if it actually works. I bet it doesn't work. Well, maybe on the server side it does, but I'm pretty sure on the client side is gonna look extremely bad because I don't think we have like oxygen updates. Wait, what's wrong? Being used by another process? What? Which process? Oh my god, I didn't close the, the game. I'm stupid. Now we check if this works. <sighs> so I need a few levels. Actually, survive. not being indicated but yeah I just died of suffocation damage uh, 
What is this? Why do I have the bleeding effect? So yeah, this is something wrong with the client. So first of all, do we send any updates um, on the oxygen changes? Um, So, on base attribute change, we we'll have the change flags. We send base attributes. Yeah, we do send oxygen. So, let me double check if that's the case. Hmm. Oh, I know. Yeah, so we do send oxygen. Come on, give me the highlight. Yeah, so this looks good. We do send oxygen. Let's just take guess on the client side, we are not updating this properly. I don't have the, the command for that. Um, okay. So this packet is three eight. Three eight. Okay, I need to wait for it to load. Um, but okay, let's create the oxygen commands. Yeah, I don't have it. <clears throat>
server chat commands. Where's the health commands? I just saw it and lost it. If mana, that's enough. So this is gonna be oxygen. So let's exit, let's close the server, export. Hello, hello, <clears throat> I'm doing fine. Just a little bit exhausted as usual on, at the end of the day. <laughs> um, but yeah, doing good, how are you doing? So I just exported. Now I can start this. Okay. Now if we do oxygen zero no. Okay, so I didn't restore and now I'm losing health. And then, yeah. Health. Yeah, the client just definitely not updating the, the oxygen bar, but it's actually working. Relaxing. What is PTO? <clears throat> oh, <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, so one second, I need to check this packet. Uh, where was it? Movement controller. Three eight. Three eight attribute base. Receive attribute base. Set attribute base. Player Hmm, this is something weird. Oh wow, it's not getting updated on the client at all. So let me see if I can fix that. Um, so this is maximum. Wait, what? Where is the current? Mm. What does this say? This is maximum value. Oh, 
So where is the current value coming from? I'm so confused right now. Mm. I have HP, SP. The hell? Probably need to do this off stream so I'm not like doing something that you guys can see, but I, I'm trying to see if I can fix this real quick. Because this should be easy, it's just. It's weird that uh, the current value is not being stored um, next to the maximum value. Here you are. Player LC. Oh, wow. So basics MLC. Basics MLC. Okay, let's see if this changes anything. Uh, exit game, build. So now we have this command. Maybe I can commit something already. Let me check. Yeah, I can commit this skill. Uh, this skill. This and this. Now I have this small schema. The 
this is fixed. Now this. Oxygen chat command, and we now have our client ready. Let's check if it helped or not. What the hell is going on? Yeah, it definitely broke it. So yeah, that, that was actually the max um, capacity for sure. What does this say? <laughs> it's the same thing. Okay. Um, oh, I think I know. So if I do this. This not equals this, then we update the max capacity. And the basics is the current capacity, hopefully. Yeah, basics MLC is current. Basic MLC current. Okay. Yeah, that was my mistake. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, I'm trying to fix a small bug in the game. Uh, basically, the 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 oxygen value is not getting updated properly. And I needed to to display the actual value, but unfortunately, I cannot uh, show the client code. But this should be a very small fix. So this is why I'm like doing it right now. Normally, I'm doing all the client changes off stream. <clears throat> Yeah, this should be done. Now oh, let's wait a little bit for the build to complete. So in the meantime, what do we have here? This is not yet ready. Um, here we have the oxygen command that we can commit to the repository. Um, such a jet command. Hmm. 
Okay, this is done. And uh, in the meantime, we can start with the next thing that I wanted to implement is we somehow need to run some skills when the monster dies. Um, so have this battle component. <clears throat> so here we have our kill command. Well, not command, but action have an entity died mm. yeah we reset our health mana rage points oh and the client field is ready so let's check how it works now <clears throat> so now it's taken And it's not being updated properly. Okay, I'm gonna leave it and just do this fix off stream because it looks like it's a little bit more complicated than I initially anticipated. <clears throat> so, So first, uh, the oxygen drain skill. I think it's it's fine. It works on the server side. It's just on the client side. It's weird. Um, which I'm gonna fix a little bit later. But everything else looks fine. So I think I'm gonna just use this one this is for mermaids right yeah So, now we somehow need to probably create another event, like uh, before and to diet or something like that. And that event should... Um, Wait, actually, actually, this is the event that I need. Signals. Let's move this after the signals. So we don't have any synchronization problems. And so on entity diet, um, what do we have here?
clear the enemy table and distribute the rewards. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I think I need another event. So let's say if I want to use something like automatic revive uh, when the entity dies, how can I do that? Can I run it before this skill thing? Here. So if it's not dead but should die, then we execute an event, uh, which is gonna be like before that death event or something like that and after that event we do the check again in this case uh, the kill event is not gonna be triggered at all hmm <laughs> Mm, I'm not sure how to do this. Hello, hello. I'm doing fine. How are you doing? <clears throat> so yeah, we have two options. One is to run this event before mm, the death of the entity. In that case, we can prevent the death. So let's say if we have this, uh, if we would implement this revive, scale automatic revive, then it's going to trigger before the actual death. Then this is not going to happen at all. Or we can actually do this uh, on this event when the entity actually died. The thing is, we also have the spawn manager commands. Yeah, when the entity dies, it tries to despawn it. Spawn request queue. Yeah, basically it, it's gonna be despawned completely. I can actually cancel uh, the respawn, the despawn request. So here we added, um, added the request to the despawn queue. On update, get those requests. We 
we find the delay and we set the dispawn timers. Right, dispawn timers. <clears throat> And only when the timer expires, we actually do the dispawn. So can we remove the entity from this timer? We can, but yeah, we need to... Wait, 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 dispawn timers. It's not threat safe. He. It's not threat safe. Hmm. So what methods do we have? Have request this palm. Yeah, I guess we just add another queue, another concurrent queue. So we don't have any race conditions. Okay, okay, so I have an idea. Um, cancel the spawn. Oh my god, can, can I type? Spawn requests. For this entity. Cancel this spawn request. So let's go and implement that. So cancel this spawn request. Uh, to do that we need Spawn request cancel queue. Cancellation. We will not have any delay overrides, so we can remove this. So yeah, we're just doing that. This pound request cancellation queue. Now back to our method. So if yeah, let, let's copy this check so we ensure that um, the entity is actually owned by our spawner. And then we do this spawn cancellation queue and queue new spawn request cancellation entity entity ID. Okay. Then we process this queue. So we have our request, we don't need any timers and here we will just remove request entity ID. Uh, I don't remember, can we remove if it's not there? Yes, we can. Try for and successfully found and removed, otherwise false. Okay. So this should work. Now, where is our event handler? An entity died, and we need another event, uh, an entity revived. 
Oh, we have it. We're just not triggering it, I guess. No, we do trigger it. So these are the revive signals. And it stops. Yeah, let's move this event handler to the back. So on entity revived. Let's create a method. Wait, why abstract? Just create a method. Uh, we copy this, paste it right here. So on entity revived, this uh, this panel cost cancellation Q and Q new this panel cancellation request args entity ID. Okay. Yeah, let's copy that. So, oh, right, we don't forget about that. So, on entity revived, we cancel the dispawn logic. This is actually perfect. Um, One other thing to consider is we will actually distribute the reward the rewards. Um, let me see. Kill and to date. Yeah, we will actually distribute the rewards. Uh, when the entity dies, so we will clear enemy table. Uh, this is this is fine. We will distribute the hunt rewards. Mm, okay, X rewards and loot collection. So I need to clear the loot collection when entity is revived. Okay, so I'm clearing enemy table, damage table. And yeah, I'm clearing the loot collection. Okay, perfect. So I have everything that they need, I guess. Now I just need to trigger the events. Um, actually, now like listen the, for, for this event and trigger the scale. Um, and to do that, I'm not sure where to place it. In which component? It's going to be just for the monsters. We will use, I guess, NPC prototypes for that. Let's actually do that. PC prototype. Hmm. Where is the default skill? Is it in the learned skill collection? I guess so. Yeah. Okay, can we make it a learned skill? Hmm. So if it if we place it here, but for example, instead of 
combat and handle flags, we will have, or in addition to these flags, we will have uh, that flag. Most of this is going to be irrelevant. So health factor is irrelevant because it's zero. Target health factor and target range uh, is relevant because we will not have any target anymore. And enemies, summons, combat duration. Yeah, this, this every, everything from this is irrelevant. Mm. And let me see. Combat behavior. So I have this use learn skill. If I adult behavior that also have this learned skill. Has learned skill. Uh, but okay, what about the death? That state idle behavior have lowest priority. And we do nothing. Okay, first of all, let me check if the reviving actually cancels the dispawn logic. I think I have everything to test this. So let's kill this monster. I think for some reason the client renders it as dead. Okay, but that's the client. I'm gonna fix that later, I think. So. The main thing is we have to be sure that this monster doesn't get despawned. This is working. Let me check in the return.
Yeah, this is some kind of bug on the client side. Just renders it as um, as dead when it's not moving. But at least it's not getting this pounds. So let's actually try and relog. Will it fix this visual bug or not? Okay, um, guess we can try to use skills here. I'm not sure if it's worth it. Maybe we can just add uh, the skill. So one nice thing about that is we could use probability. Oh, by the way, this is wrong. This should be like one, maybe two for the big ones. Okay, so yeah, this was just the client side bar. Let me write it down. So, um, and And master gets revived. Uh, client render sits is dead and uh, it's not moving. Okay. Can I do that later? So This this thing is working now. I need to commit a few things. So first I fixed those percentages that I didn't notice last time. Here. Second thing is, wait, this is in the powder. Uh, this thing. Cancel this power requests. So an entity revived. Yeah, we cancel. Um, cancel and see this pawn requests. And the entity gets revived. Good. Good. <clears throat> <sighs> 
now back to the skills. Um, so do we need the percentage or not? I think yeah. But instead of adding it to this table, we can actually add it to NPC prototypes. Next to this default skill ID. And just add two fields. Um, death skill ID and death skill ID probability, something like that. So it's going to happen just one time um, after the entity had died. Mm. Okay, so combat behavior. No. Uh, battle component, battle component. Undied. Hmm. Wait, I also would like to have this or at least similar functionality to this for the characters as well. When the character dies, for example, we have like uh, automatic revival. To do that, I would need to tie that to Auras. Um, crap, I have no idea how to do that properly. Wait, Aura the itself cannot process those events. So an aura can can trigger some function. Um, what do we have? Have skill handler functions. Let's look into that. Uh, yeah, it's in the battle info. Hmm. So ideally, mm, I would need something like a skill handler, but on some events, like for example, when the entity died. Um, actually, wait. Um, Where was that? Battle component.
So we send the signal to ourselves. Maybe we can handle this signal. Um, so a thing like this can add like a single handler. Signal handler. Um, And this thing is not a uh, thread safe, so I would have to create something new for this. But okay, if we have something like a signal hand handler that can be created, um, I don't think it can be created by the function. Because we only have the entity object here, we don't have access to the controller crap. Um. So we would need to create something like these collections. Skill handler collection. Um, So yeah, we can actually do that and it's gonna be like signal handler collection um, which is gonna be triggered somewhere here from the battle component um, but maybe not by the battle component so we need another component that would process this handle signal that will have this handle signal uh, method and it's gonna execute all the assigned skill handlers okay theoretically I can do that okay let's say we have signal handlers they would have to be defined the same way that we define skill handlers so they would have to be identified by an ID but in this case I don't care about the priority um, so we would have to have them identified by ID. Each signal handler would have to be an object that can handle any signal, uh, but only processes the signals that it's interested in. Okay. Hmm. So let's have well, let's say we have something like that. Then theoretically we can create an aura that's not gonna disappear after death. I think we we already have that functionality. Oh uh, yeah, persist after death. Um and it's gonna just assign a signal handler.
And that signal handler, for example, for the automatic revive, is gonna listen to the change entity state signal. If the entity is the same as the listener entity and the type is dead, then Then what? Then we revive. Yeah, we just can send another signal, the re a revive signal. Um, okay. That could be useful for the characters. They would have something like an automatic revive in that case. But for the monsters, um, what about the monsters? It should be different in case of monsters, actually. Because I don't want to show the aura at all. I want to have a chance for that. So yeah, this is not going to be useful for the monsters. It's a good idea though. Maybe I can actually implement that. I want to write it down. So yeah, this, this is actually a good idea, but not for right now. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, signal handler. Um, uh, entity signal handlers uh, that have IDs. Um, can be assigned by addition functions um, similar to skill handlers to a concurrent collection. Similar to scale handlers. Um, and on and wait, 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 and um, controller components would. Um, and would call handle signal methods on each of the handlers in the collection. Uh, this way we can implement auto reviving horospaces for the characters. I think that should be enough for me to remember what I actually want to, to do with that. Um, but yeah, back to our Death event. Hmm.
Oops. Um, so if we get rid of the probability, then we can just add the skill ID to NPC prototypes, which would mean that this scale is going to be executed every time when the monster dies. We can theoretically uh, add this probability to the scale itself, uh, either to the scale handler and like define the probability based on the level, or we can use action additions. So the scale is going to be used every time, but uh, the result of the scale would depend on the probability. So this is probably the way to go, at least for now. And then if I need something more, I would actually have some requirements, because right now what I can think about is uh, two scales and I don't really need the probability for any of those. No, I, I need the automatic revival kill probability. Um, Have the revive skill in the skill handlers, right? Uh, Prius tree revive handler. Yeah, it just adds the signal. Mm. Can we make the skill miss in certain? Probability. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess I, I'm just gonna create another skill handler for the monster revival that would have the probability based on the level of the skill. Hmm. Okay, and if we go with the probability approach, technically we can just add another column here and put the death flag. right here and then just iterate over all of the skills and check the probability when the entity dies And we don't have to check anything else. Well, maybe the recent hits. I don't know. Okay, let's do that. Uh, and if I don't like it, I can always refactor that. But for now, I think this would be enough Mm, enough flexibility for me. So I would have ability to use, uh, to add multiple skills on, on that event. I would have pro uh, probability for each of them. I think this is the way to go. NPC skills, combat idle, death. 
or that. And the dead mode. Wait, wait, wait. Did I commit everything that I wanted to? Because this is the structure change. It can mess up a lot of stuff. Yes. Okay, great. Now we can generate the CSV file and import it back. Now it would be nice to actually incorporate that into the, not the combat behavior, but that state idle behavior. But what I want to do is to actually run it only one time. Only one time. Can I do that? So once we're in this state, I think it can. Um, I think I had something like run once. Custom action decorators, order repeater, turn failure, turn success. Hmm. So if I would implement this run once, the problem is, yeah, like I can store a flag inside the action that indicates that it's uh, it executed uh, the child branch, but then. How do we reset it? Because this is going to be just executed multiple times per second. And if this check fails, it's just not going to execute anything below that. So the next time the the monster dies, it's not gonna execute that thing. Uh, hmm. Okay, what if instead of this idle action, We create something like execute once until interrupted. Have the wait action. Uh, wait duration. No, that's not the thing that I needed. But yeah, basically it's gonna return running. Okay. So how do I do that? Um, can create something like run once and wait. Okay. 
that way if uh, if this returns false the sequence is going to cancel their currently running um, action and during the cancel we can reset the flag Okay, let's do that. Um, oh my god. Run once and wait. So this is gonna be similar to this one. Do I need the context for this? Delta time. No, I don't need the context. Wait, this is actions. It's not where I wanted to create it. I needed a decorator, so it's gonna be run once and wait. Can extend base decorator. Uh, let's copy this. Remove that. So we need a flag. Um, Pilot. Um, Executed. So on update, if this executed, if not executed, then we run our base task. And we don't care about the status. We will always return running. Um, but on stop, on stop, um, And stop, we're gonna set this executed to false. And here we're gonna set executed true. So if it's not executed, then we run the base task and we mark it is executed. Wait, we do care about the status. Because we need it to finish. If status is not equals running. That means it finished. So we mark it as executed. We still have our base task um, status if we would need it from from the outside. Okay, so this can actually work. Um, 
So now what I need is I need to copy this behavior. And instead of that, we're gonna have run once and wait. Uh, with uh, use learn skill. to fix this uh, name collision huh This should fix that. That can stay the same. So now we have all of those named as default. Um, Okay, now back to this use learn skill. Now we have another another thing. So what we can do is we can have like a mode imam or something like that inside this class. Which is gonna be none combat um, idle that now we're not gonna have these attributes anymore, but we're gonna have our mod. Something like that. Now, if this mode equals combat, mode equals 
idle. Here we add another flag that let's read that from the CSV CSV I mean okay So this is idle. And this is combat. And this is combat. And here we add if mode that scale is not that, then we skip. Okay. Run once and wait. As learn scale. And I guess I can do the same for the uh, how is it called? Return state. No, 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 no. In the combat behavior we have covered modes. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. For now that should be enough actually. So let's test this. Um yeah, now I have this new column. So let's add purple GUI. Oh, I forgot to actually create a scale. So yeah, let's do that. Um, self revive so we don't care about the range target type is on self it's position zero we don't have any cast time I don't really care about the cooldown, but it's okay. Don't have attack type. We don't have any mana requirements. State. No, state is important. No, that state. This should be marked as one. Target that state should be marked as one. And I don't care about anything else. Let's remove any effects.
yourself revive. Yeah, this is good. Now uh, we can assign the skill handler as a revive skill handler. Yeah, technically it's gonna be a priest skill handler, but it's okay. So maybe I can change it later. So, okay, this is it. And now we can assign it. Self-revive, probability 100%, not in combat, but in the dead state. Let's try. So we do have some styling problems. I would need to take care about that. Take care of that. But for now, that's not important. And I should not follow a mad hat. Okay, so where do I define it? On the top? don't usually do that, so I have no idea what are the style cup rules. Field should now follow it, and then I'm okay. Is that fine? Constructor should not follow it now. Okay. Close in parentheses. Wait, really? Ah, uh, I forgot about the this stuff. Um, but okay, now we need to find the mob. Mm. Here. Now let's see what's happening. Nothing is happening. Ooh, okay. So where is that state behavior? This learn skill returned failure. But yeah, it actually ran only once, which is good. Now if we revive him and kill him again. Let's run the AI debugger. Now it should be two times, yes. 
But the scale fails. Why does the scale fail? Uh. Mm. Oh, get to attach the debugger. Okay, how do I how do I debug this? Let's do it like that. What the hell? Oh, yeah, I'm stupid. So, if mod equals that and scale is that, and then we do this stuff. Okay, now let's attach to the process and now I hope we can test this. <coughs> Okay, so we got it, then pass all these checks, just fine. Actually, yeah, now I can actually use this recent hits, which is interesting. Maybe I can find a good use for that. So now we assign ourselves as a target. Okay. So all the checks passed just fine. Now let's see what's... Why is it failing? This is source requirements, and it fails. So, um, action scale source requirements. What do we have? That stage requirements. Wait, what? 
yeah, that stage requirement and one of these entity states. Who knows why is it failing? So that stage requirement. Um, So the candidate should be dead. So we check against the source. So action. Where is the source? Source. Evaluation disabled. What the hell? What the hell? Okay, Th that's what was weird, but okay. Battle info. Uh, what? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the lazy attribute. Uh, is that true? So that, that check passes. Now, entity state requirements. Why squad sit? Why? Hmm. Hmm. This is a bit weird. Oh, wait. Source requirements, stage requirements. I'm missing the death stands death state here. Um, okay, so source requirements. was working before now it's not working uh, weird where is this scales table So first flag is lie, k. Okay. Second is sit and different variations of it. K. Okay. Third is stand. Walk, run. So for this skill to actually succeed, I need the state requirements to be zero. Wait, is this the skill? Yes, this is the skill. Okay. Where 
Where's my debug? Now experts. Did they save? Yes. And restart. Okay, it worked. Now I have infinite checks. Okay. Okay, what's wrong now? Is it the client side bug or the server side bug? Is the server side bug? Huh. Okay, uh, maybe that was just the probability. <clears throat> yeah, at least we now have this self revive. Uh, now, let me look into the normal revive. We have something like that. Where are the additions? Current health percent. So how can I improve this? Um, I'd like to have different percentages as well, similar to what we have here. And I need some kind of delay. Some kind of delay. How can I do the delay? I don't think I can actually do 
a delay here. Uh, unless I de delay all the skills that should occur in death, but I don't want to do that. Um, How can I delay a scale? I can delay the revive signal, but I can't because if I want to restore health after that, then yeah, it's not possible. Okay. Let's forget for now about the uh, about the delay. Let's do the different levels. So two. Wait, 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 wait. Wrong hotkey. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That would be our percentage of health after revival. Okay, now let's copy the additions from this one. Oh, this is how I did it. So this is the in the interval. Okay, I guess. Five thousand. What what is five thousand? Current health percent. Oh, yeah, okay. Five thousand is fifty percent. Yeah, basically, let's let's duplicate it exactly like that. One second interval, huh? Okay, let, let's see. Uh, and I wanted to see how that is done here in the actions. Ah, I see. Oh yeah, so basically it is almost immediate, it's just a little bit delayed. So let's copy that uh, from this. 
primary target permanent 500 milliseconds self revive and let's copy 10 of them so Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, and let's assign here. Oh my god. Twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty. 90 and 100 and this thing two three four five six seven eight nine ten Yes, great. Okay, and now let's assign this seventy percent version here. Actually, I have to close the client. So, export, rebuild, restart, start the client again. Now he should regenerate seventy percent health. Yes, okay. Okay, perfect. before he revives. Don't think I can, but let's try. I can. Uh, crap. Oh. <laughs> I actually managed to load him before he revives. <laughs> How can I prevent that? This is actually weird. Why did that happen? I 
And do I actually need to prevent that? Because if, if I would add some kind of delay to the revival as I initially wanted to, then you actually would would need to be able to loot it properly. Hmm. So on revive it actually removes loot collection. How the hell was I able to loot it? Was it just a matter of a delay? Think so. Yeah, I think so. Ooh. Well okay, I, I don't think it can do anything about that and probably I shouldn't. Okay, self-revival now works, actually works. So now let's remove that skill from that purpokui. Should stay dead. Now if I export this, what do I have here in the CSS? The new scale, NPC skills. Should have a new column here. Yeah, just a column. Perfect. And this scale. Okay. Um, that's that support for NPC skills. Now we have a big chunk of changes here. Oh, Balder Toolkit. So I need to add at least a little bit of documentation on this one. Um, Actually, no. I'm gonna do that later with all the other documentation. So, not right now. can push this, then go back to Boulder, update that, um, this is just a renaming, so I don't need to update this right now. Fold to fold, yes. Okay. Um.
This is done. Uh, now we have this. Oh, let's update folder target update. <clears throat> then we need to change this. Um, this is, um, how did they call it here? That state support for NPC skills, that's it. Yeah. And now we update Himmerheim server. Um, combat behavior. That state behavior, this is a new one. Okay. So, um, Just like that, now we push. And here we have self-revive skill. Okay, this is done. Uh, we don't really need this, but yeah, we don't really need that. <clears throat> so yeah, I think this is it for today. Tomorrow I want to actually add uh, one more scale that will use this um, that event. It's gonna be used when the monster uh, is dead. So yeah, I'm gonna call it today. <clears throat> thank you, all, thank you everyone for watching and yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Thank you.